what average underwear feels like. What Duluth buck naked underwear feels like. Duluth trading buck naked underwear. Get the most comfortable underwear there is. Only at Duluth stores at DuluthTrading.com. Okay, so welcome everybody. We are saying hello to our national team here uh, after what has been a certainly challenging season. We look forward to releasing the balls in the Duluth, the Duluth Trading Company running of the balls shortly here. Just wanted to catch up and first of all, have everybody say hello. And uh, we'll start off with Jason. Jason, how you doing? I'm um, great, Gordy. It's great to be back in Lake Placid, back in the US. Uh, we just had a nice six week stint in Europe. Uh, traveling each week, track to track, country to country, uh, during a worldwide pandemic. So uh, it feels good to be back home in a, a little bit more of a stress-free environment, and to really decompress after the after the time in Europe. Yeah, and uh, Ashley, if you could, um, Ashley Farquharson, if you could just tell us a little bit about some of those challenges and what was it like on the road, and you know, talk talk about those experiences. Definitely a lot different than previous years. We had to work hard to kind of find joy and fun in the little moments since we were in isolation for so much of our time. A lot of it was spent like, you know, we would all linger after dinner and just talk about our day. And although we were all like separated throughout the day, we kind of got to come together as a team a little bit more through those like tiny moments of joy. And Tucker, you know, this was a different looking season. What, what were some of the logistical challenges and, and differences in terms of just trying to be a slider uh, on the World Cup circuit? Yeah, it's hard to, hard to know where to start. Um, I think the biggest logistical challenge for us was the team got entirely split up per the FIL's rules. Um, they split the team into what they called pods. Uh, so pretty much everyone was in a different sliding session, which was difficult for us because usually we bounce off each other for ideas and we work together really as a team to get better and perfect our driving lines. Um, and then of course the coaches were out the track all day. So, you know, props to them. They did a great job at helping us out and keeping their cool and being great over there. But logistically it was, it was challenging, but uh, we came out on the other side with uh, everyone was healthy, uh, no negative or no positive tests on the athlete side. So uh, all in all, it was good for us. Uh, Johnny, emotionally, uh, was this a tough season for you? I mean, you know, going through all this stuff and honestly you know, not having a roommate, stuff, it's, a it's a different Not experience. having a roommate, it's different um, So talk to about the emotion uh, of the season. So. Yeah, it was definitely a bit of a challenge this year. Well, kind of going off what Tucker was saying, um, even emotionally with being at the track with your teammates and being able to bounce ideas and everything off each other, not really having that. And even not then being able to hang out with your teammates and talk and decompress, you're just kind of by yourself. Uh, it was definitely a challenge. You had to, I don't know, you had to figure out, figure it out for yourself. Like Ashley said, find joy in the little things and really push through the best you could. Yeah. And, and uh, Emily, you know, I, I feel like this, this season, you know, was just so different. Did it, you know, you had such a unique schedule with uh, being a soldier. Um, first of all, if you don't mind just telling, walking us through what that was like. Right, so being a soldier is um, being a part of the lower class athletes program and everything, it's a fantastic opportunity. At the same time, at a time when there's a, when there's a worldwide pandemic, I have a lot of people who are accountable for me and traveling during this time is, is risky. And so I was not authorized to do so for a long time. Um, so it was, it was very stressful trying to figure that out and trying to get the right approvals. So while the team was over there, I had to come back and then I had to kind of do this paperwork dance to try and get the right approvals. And it, and it happened, it came through, but that meant that I was over with the team and then I had to come back and then I got to go back again. So I missed a lot. Um, we all did though, even if I wasn't a part of WCAP, just the US team as a whole, we skipped the first part of the season. Um, so it, 
what can we say, right? I mean, <laughs> we did the best we could. I got some races in, made it to Worlds. That was a big win, but yeah, it's we scraped it all together. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Summer, you know, you obviously, you, you came away with the medal at the Eagles World Cup, which was an unbelievable um, accomplishment. Um, what was that like, you know, through all these challenges to get on the podium? Uh, yeah, thanks, Gordy. Um, it felt really good to podium in Eagles. Um, last year, I got my my first World Cup medal in Eagles after like a couple years of really close calls. So to be able to back that up, um, especially in this year with all these challenges, it, it felt um, amazing. There's actually a, a picture of me I posted on Instagram um, that Merrick's Gallon, Galanos, yeah. <laughs> the guy who uh, got, really well. <laughs> and you can just see I'm like raging in the outrun, but I, I kind of am rethinking my my very natural celebration face because there's that picture of me raging, and um, Ashley also had quite a great race in Eagles, and she comes up the outrun with like the cutest smile. She's like, "Oh yay! Like I did good," and then there's me with like this face of a monster, but. Um, <laughs> All of that aside, it felt really good to, to have that um, result this year. These are the blind faithful, the dripping with drive, forward thinking, un nine to fivers. They don't take the road less traveled, they forge their own roads. They dream wildly, they make bravely. These are the way forgers. This is how they forge their way. Good day and welcome to the 2021 Duluth Trading Company running of the balls in Lake Placid, New York, where it's seven degrees and sunny, a beautiful day here. We have 1,300, pardon me, 1,834 balls, raising over $38,000 for US Luge. Wanna recognize our sponsors and introduce our co-host and play-by-play -play expert, Chris Mazder. Chris, how are you doing today? Oh, awesome, Gordy. Thank you so much for having me. And that's so amazing, $38,000. Yeah, Chris, you know, it really is an important fundraiser for our athletes and programs. You, of course, being a, a direct recipient. And uh, Chris, thank you. We're watching Aiden Kelly and Mark Rometh, <laughs> two Olympians getting ready to release the balls here. We hear the countdown and you can see the Duluth gate. We're located at the top of the track about one mile. And there they go, Chris. That's, it's crazy. That's what 1800 lacrosse balls look like. That is it. There they go. And, and so you, uh, you can win by being the first, but also it looks like the last ball gets a prize too, right, Gordy? That is correct. Yeah, yeah we've got a top 10, we'll take prizes in this race today and uh, the last place ball. And there's also the special race to win a trip to the World Cup in which Chris, you will be competing in Lake Placid and that's tentatively scheduled for the fall of 2021. As we watch the main pack, you can see we've got a group of leaders that have broken away here as we're working through the upper labyrinth, Chris. What is this like to slide on? I mean, they're taking a great line through uh, Curve 8 there. Nice and low. You don't want to be too high. Uh, you know what's, what's crazy is that these balls are actually moving pretty fast down the track. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. They, you they, never, they, like a couple years ago, I never would have ever dreamed of this, but this is such a cool event. And uh, yeah, it's actually a lot of fun to watch. It is fun. And as you said earlier, we're watching the main, main group going through Curve head into curve 11. This is the labyrinth section where it's definitely, Chris, this is a, for the for all of the, the sliders and balls, this is a tricky, challenging portion of the track. Right here, this, you don't want to be going late into curve 12 like all those uh, balls, but uh, <laughs> well, luckily they have a lower center of gravity than us, so I, I think they're not going to flip over. Or if they right. do, it's fine, it's the same side. But so, and, Gordon, what happens if uh, a ball flies out of the track? Is that a, is that a DNF? Does that not count? Like that how is, do we get into the last ball? Instant disqualification. And Chris, this is this is the tricky part as we watch the uh, the main pack going into 13. Ooh, and look at that, there we go. Yep, <laughs> see some bouncing around, some activity. Yep. 
This is the slowest part of the track as they go over the top of the chicane section into curve 17. There was a ball that was clearly in the lead. Yes, and here we are going into the finish. We can see that's the there first it is. ball. And we will be flashing the results here momentarily, Chris. You can see the main pack kind of rolling through here. Oh and yeah. There are a lot of balls. It's going to take some time, but here are the winners. In first place, Evan Brody. As we go through all of our leaders, we see a lot of familiar names and friends. Last place, Buck Petrick, and Don Simpkin wins the Blue Ball trip to Lake Placid, New York. Well, so, Chris, any final thoughts as we wrap this up? You know, I got to take a lesson from some of these balls. They uh, drove some great lines today. And uh, most importantly, I, I think everyone had a good time. And for Chris Mazder and USA Luz, this is Gordy Shear. Thanking you very much for tuning in to the 2021 Duluth Trading Company Running of the Ball.